So welcome everybody. Uh, James, thanks so much for, uh, first off, participating in the Open Hardware Diversity Alliance and then having us talk to all of your community. Um, it's something that, you know, James with Open Power and Mindy as well, um, Rob from Chips Alliance, who I asked to present with me and Western Digital kind of all came together and, and we're really noticing the lack of diversity in, the, in our open hardware communities. So, you know, we started saying, why are there so few women and underrepresented individuals in this community? You know, is it because open hearts are hard to navigate? Is career progression just hard to figure out? Or is it just lack of visibility in the talent? So we came together with, with, this, uh, with this group and launched it in September of, 20, of 2021. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. And our, we did this with a mission uh, to bring the community together to support programs that are not only going to help organizations, but they're also going to help individuals help get more diversity within the community and help with the professional advancement of women and underrepresented individuals. Uh, next, and this is this is just so important uh, because diversity equity and inclusion is central to the health of any open source community. And it's this diversity of thought that benefits organizations through greater innovation, better team performance, wider perspectives to any sort of problem or documentation, better customer service, attracting new talent. I mean, there's so many benefits when you do have this diverse organization. And what I see in the RISC-5 community and um, not sure what James and, and Rob see in their communities, but it's pretty low in, in what we have here at RISC-5. Um, but why is this so hard to achieve? And the question is something that we're diving into with, the, with this alliance, not only identifying the causes, but also creating programs designed to increase the participation and retention of women. And with that, I'm, I'm going to pause. We'll take a look at the picture. We'll see if Job, Robert James has anything. I, I just I found this image when I was uh, preparing for the presentation, and it to me it was just really eye opening. Difference between equality and equity, and it, this is you know something we're just trying to raise everybody everybody up together. And with that, I'll pause. Rob, have anything you want to add? Put you on the spot. No, are you muted? Now I am unmuted. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I, thanks, Kim. I, no, I, I think this is a great slide here. I, I like this, that it, it demonstrates that there are many who want to participate and see what's going on and help contribute. And this slide helps articulate the challenge that we see, I think, in the engineering community, which is how can we build bridges or uh, ladders to allow different folks to participate and, you know, become conversant in the topics. And I know in my, you know, 40 years of experience in my career uh, and that managing large engineering organizations and working with different engineering organizations that having input from different folks of different backgrounds, different walks to life is, is critical in terms of gathering enough information to ensure the right decision is made to help guide people in their careers, help uh, decide product decisions, you name it. But having that broad spectrum of opinion and having people the opportunity to express that is, is paramount towards that. And so that's what we're trying to help foster with the Open Hardware Engineering Diversity Alliance is to provide that or help develop that ecosystem to build that stairway for folks to have a chance to participate and to feel valued and to help them in their careers and you know make it easier. It doesn't have to be hard. It, it's not like when I started in engineering school 40 years ago uh, in upstate New York that you know it was look to the left, look to the right, one of you won't survive. You know, it's not the Marine Corps, so to speak, right? So I think we need to try to break down those barriers and, and encourage people to be part of this. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. So going on to the next slide, um, 
this is the marketing in me, uh, the empowering, promoting, uh, facilitating and encouraging. So when we look at how we're going to do this, you know, we're really looking kind of at these four key areas and then dropping on down to the next slide, Rob, please. We have set up this structure with um, an advisory team. So that's kind of our leadership, two co-chairs and five advisory team members who are working up to set the priorities and work with our what we call our stream leads for implementation. And the stream leads focus on a specific area where they will create their goals or strategies or implementation plans. They are really important because, you know, they're kind of, they're, they're the workers. They're the workers who are going to work on, on implementing programs. So if we go on to the next slide, uh, we, we've organized it this way uh, in, in terms of stream leads that we need. And, and this is my call to action to you. If any of this sounds interesting, you know, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, but this, we need people who are going to help with organizational items, such as what should our metrics be and what's going to, you know, what should we track so that it shows success. Um, somebody who will lead the communications and someone who will lead our alliances and community, meaning that looking for those partnerships with other organizations to just expand our breadth of, of things that we can offer. When we look at our program streams, uh, we have learn. You know, we want to be, provide, be providing content to people uh, on um, knowledge that they can gain, maybe from an organizational standpoint or from an individual standpoint on how to improve diversity in their organization or uh, themselves become better at some of the areas where they're interested to, in gaining that uh, knowledge. We have somebody who is already going to be leading our speak, which is identifying individuals, helping them submit to CFPs, um, and then preparing to present. Um, we have a meet stream where, we, where that person will be working on putting together events and networking opportunities because it's all about expanding who you know. Uh, we have a mentor stream providing mentor mentee programs, uh, a talk stream, somebody to help advise with inclusive language. How do we word our call for proposals better so that um, everybody feels that they can comfortably submit to that CFP? Uh, a recognized stream so that you recognize individuals, help raise them up, um, give out rewards, and then our empower stream, just encouraging, just really looking for encourage, uh, ways we can encourage people in that. And when we look at our targets, we have our organizations, as I mentioned. We also have a very specific target for leadership, identifying individuals that we can help um, uh, that uh, in, enable, not enable, that's not the word I want. I've totally lost my word. Uh, um, in, encourage and give them the tools to be stepping up into leadership positions in the hardware community. And then um, we want, we have programs that are going to be targeting specifically contributors, people who, do, who are contributing code, developers, software developers, et cetera, and then students. Rob, do you, are you going to pause? I don't know if you if you have anything you want to add here. No, I think these are all important attributes, and uh, you know I have a couple slides in my deck, but I will just I'll cover it verbally here since we're on, on message at this point. It and I think it's more than just about quotas, which I know is often talked about in in different segments of society. I think it's really about building a community. Uh, you know, from the ground up and starting early in the in the pipeline, so to speak, right? And that's going all the way back into perhaps the elementary schools, but really to build that curiosity amongst uh, young people, and then also then giving them the confidence to ask questions, to engage, and to learn. And then I think in terms of you know the more professional environment where you know many folks are right now, it's the same type, similar type of thing. Not so much the learning aspect, although learning is a continuous part of life, but is to provide encouragement uh, to individuals to reach further in their career, to uh, speak out and not be afraid to share their minds or ask mind or ask questions uh, on different topics. So I think, you know, helping build and provide that framework uh, will help build this overall community. And there's a definitive need for building an engineering community, right? And I'll share some thoughts on my in my talk about that as well. But 
let's just say that there's not enough engineers around, so to speak, to, to do the task at hand that uh, you know, we're all seeing in front of us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and we had a couple of comments in, in the chat. Uh, that's awesome over at ITT Madras. Uh, so great, um, one in three women in the lab. That's amazing. So that is uh, great. Yeah. So, so far what we've done, we launched in September, 2021. Uh, I've, I've had some conversations with organizations who wanna join in this project. Uh, I am capturing names of individuals who wanna participate and volunteer, and we're promoting this at events, like really trying to get the word out. Uh, I, did, uh, I was at Open Source Summit, of course we're here today. We'll be at Linux Foundation Member Summit in November and Risk 5 Summit in December. So if, you want to volunteer, if we go down to next here, um, you, I, I am looking at the list of people who have, who have volunteered. I'll be reaching out to them uh, and assign, you know, saying, hey, yeah, let's be a stream lead. You, that's what you want to do and please build your team. Um, we do hope to start educational webinar series in January and, and more to come. And if we go to our last slide, if you send an email to info at diversityhardware.org, that comes to me <clears throat> and I, I can add you to the list and you know, welcome all, all volunteers, anybody who wants to join uh, the organization, anybody who wants to you know, join in and participate or join in and, and volunteer. James, uh, Great. James Thank and you, um, Rob, yeah, do you have anything else you want to add on this? No, I no, think, I think it's a, go ahead, James, sorry. I was just going to say, no, I think this is a great initiative. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting things rolling and, and getting more participants in. Um, I'm, I'm excited that uh, we've actually launched this thing. So it's good. Yeah. So um, if I, if I, Luke, um, what I, Luke asked the question, are you planning to include newer diversity or awareness of Asperger's and others? So right now, I think one thing I do know about me and the people we have on the team, we definitely have passion, um, but we definitely have some lack of knowledge. So uh, one of the things that we need, to, we are looking at is how can we bring in more knowledge of things such as neurodiversity, nor, oh, sorry, didn't say that right, but, that uh, and uh, and programs that really are successful that have been successful in this area. So uh, I'm looking for experts who can advise us. Um, right, you know, a bunch of people with passion is great, but we really do need those experts and say this this is what you can do for newer diversity type items. So great question. Great. Uh, Thank and you, with James. that. Yep, thank you.